<laughs> I think I got one. Oh, yeah, yeah there he is. <laughs> he's on. Oh, yeah, nice. Oh, he's coming up. I see color coming up. Coming up. Ah, <laughs> yes. I got it. <laughs> it's a croaker. Doesn't everyone use a big deep sea reel to catch their croaker? <laughs> Listen, guys, I don't know what you do with these things. <laughs> I kind of think they're useless. Listen, can you hear them? There he goes. That's why they call called croaker. There's not a whole lot of meat on them and they're pretty easy to catch. Matter of fact, usually catch them when I don't want to catch them. So what can you do with a croaker? You know what? We're about to find out. <laughs> Let's go. Well, if you're wondering why I haven't put out a video in a while, it's because right at the last week of school, uh, over the weekend, I was stepping off a boat onto a dock and I caught my little toe on a cleat <laughs> and the other 230 pounds of my body went forward and my toe stayed back there. So I ended up not being able to walk. So I was not able to surf fish for a couple of weeks. So this is the first time here in this video that I'm actually got a chance to get back out on the beach, even though it was a little bit painful still. I was just like, I'm going to deal with it. It's been three weeks and I'm going to get out there and I'm just going to go fishing because I haven't gotten so long. And it's like, you kind of miss it after a while. You're like, man, I, I just have to sit here in the house and watch TV. It sucks. So I got out there, you know, and I got some fresh shrimp. I did the whole thing I always do. Simple stuff, double drop rig. And I thought, I'm going to catch some pompano maybe. I'll catch some whiting. But you know what I caught? <laughs> you know what I caught? My favorite fish, a croaker. Okay, it's not my favorite fish. I've got a lot of things to say about croaker. And none of them are positive. But I thought, let me make a video where I can show like at least five things you can do with a croaker. So this is the video of the five things you can do when you start catching croaker um, and my first thought was all right I've got this little fish I'm sitting here on the beach you know let's turn him into bait let's send him <laughs> so I did have my other um, rod out and I did have a five odd hook on there so I'm just like I'm gonna take this little croaker and I'm gonna stick him on the back of this hook now I've heard big trout will come and eat croaker I've heard that trout will eat croaker, and I've also heard that trout will eat croaker. I'm not sure if anything else will eat croaker, so I just wanted to find out. So I did. I cast it out there, and it wasn't long before it came by. Something took a bite out of it and then left. That was it. That's all they did was take that one little bite and left. So obviously, they don't like croaker. I actually put it out again. I got like another bite and the same reaction. They kind of bit into it and, and left. So that's number one. You can use croaker for bait. <laughs> it wasn't very successful. Uh, good luck with that. But at least it is number one on, on the list there. So we got something. Yay. I decided I'm going to go out on the kayak and I'm going to go in Davis Canal and I'm going to actually target croaker. Yes, I'm actually going out of my way to try to catch croaker. Usually I catch them as a byproduct when I'm trying to catch black drum, as probably all of you do as well, trying to catch a fish and you catch croaker. I mean, I was like, this is what I want to get. I want to get a croaker. So I'm using shrimp, the double drop rig, right in the middle of the canal, because that's really where the croaker are. Uh, if you want to catch other fish, you're going to try to catch them along the grass line. People fish under the docks. But right in the middle of the canal, that's where the croaker are. And it wasn't long before I had one. Now, I'm going to be looking for some decent-sized croaker, because I want to keep some of these uh, for different reasons, which we'll get into as the video unfolds. But uh, I was catching little ones. Now, right away at least anyway um, maybe seven inches six inches and i'm like there's just not enough fish maybe for bait but not enough for me to want to keep so i tried to get in that same area and they got a little bigger what i think i noticed is that a couple things i noticed about croaker number one is with all fish once you find a certain size fish you will continue to find that same size fish because they kind of run in schools so if, like black drum for example if i catch a 14 inch black drum and i throw the a bait out again there's a good chance i'm going to catch another drum that's going to be about that same size i'm trying to get a big croaker I'm catching little ones, but I'm trying to get a big one. <laughs> How you doing? Oh. <laughs> 
So he was catching Kroger also. Unfortunately for him, he wasn't trying to catch Kroger. I was catching Kroger, but at least I was targeting Kroger, so I can feel a little bit better about that. One thing I also know about Kroger is when you start catching Kroger, you're going to keep catching Kroger. If you don't catch a Kroger right away, there could be a black drum there. I feel the Kroger, now I'm not a wildlife biologist, but I believe the Kroger will let the bigger fish, like a black drum, have first dibs and when they see bait. But then if there's no black drum around, the croaker are like, oh, it's on, it's mine now. Now I am catching about the same size fish. This is about an eight inch one and I'm starting to think that's about it. So I'm gonna keep him, but I am gonna move on because I, I feel like I'm just gonna keep catching eight inch <laughs> croaker here. So moving on to my next spot and I'm gonna go out, I'm doing the same thing. I'm gonna throw it into the deep water and I do and I'm catching some croaker. And I feel the size, at least the weight, the pull is going up a little bit. I feel like I'm getting a little bit better croaker here. So I'll probably stick here for a few minutes and see if I can pull a couple up. And I'm going to start keeping them, like I said, because I need to have something in my bucket. So if all I catch is a couple of, oh, look, it's 25 inches. Oops, had it upside down. <laughs> it's a little bit over nine inches, right? Right? It's about nine, eight, nine inches. So that's all right. We'll keep him. I mean, I'd like to get some 12 inch croaker, but that's kind of difficult. In the fall, I'll have more luck, I think, catching big croaker if I wanted to, but in the spring, I kind of feel like still some of the little ones are around. Now, it does look like I'm catching croaker after croaker, and to some degree, I am. I'm doing fairly well on my croaker expedition, but more often than not, I'll have this come up right here. Croaker are really good at stealing bait. They peck at the shrimp, they peel off the shell, and then they peck at the the meat of it and then they get it off before you actually get them on the hook so a lot of times i'm pulling them in but a lot of times i'm just also coming up empty-handed you're gonna find that with croaker they're bait stealers then i ran into this guy right here now these guys pull pretty good for a little fish maybe it's because they're football shaped i don't know but pinfish also very good at stealing bait um, he would make a better bait i think than a croaker <laughs> if i was going to be out tarpon fishing this afternoon i probably would take him and throw him into the uh, water but i'm not so i'm going to move on uh, try to find another spot and I'm going out here into the shallow water now this is a little spot between Davis Canal and Montgomery Slough and I guess my point is I'm not staying in one spot and just continuing to catch these same size croaker I'm moving around I'm trying to find different locations different areas where I might run into a bigger school of croaker bigger size croaker that is the schools have been fine the size have been a little small but the shallow water wasn't really doing it for me um, I ended up pulling in some perch this guy right here is a silver perch. I have no problem with silver perch. I'll eat those too, but this was also a very small one. Uh, so he's not um, a croaker, so he's not going to go into the bucket. He's going to go back into the water and swim away. Come back when you're a little bit bigger there. Oh, <laughs> kind of slippery, like a whiting, right? <laughs> All right, see, I got, see if I can hold on to him here or show him to you so you know what a silver perch looks like. It's just not a very good angle, <laughs> and he won't hold still, but I'm trying here to get it so you can see him, but uh, I'll just let him go. So we're moving on. We're going to go over to Montgomery Slough and try to see if we can find some there. Montgomery Slough is sort of the backside of the island. If you're on the beach and you walk across, you're going to come over to Montgomery Slough. It goes up from the point. Uh, if you've ever launched a boat out of Blue Point Marina or a kayak out of Blue Point Marina, then, then you've been in Montgomery Slough. It's just sort of the other side. Davis Canal's on one side, Montgomery Slough's on the other. And it pretty much holds the same fish. And <laughs> here we've got ourselves a nice little croaker. Now, not a bad one. So I'm going to try to fish over here and see if I can get an even bigger one. That would be nice. <laughs> Let's see what he got here. Eh, it's probably not much different than the other side, eight and a half, nine inches, but still what I would consider a keeper. Now this next one, I got a really nice hit and I was like, this feels seriously heavy. Now maybe I've got a little black drum on or maybe I've got the big croaker I'm looking for. But when I pulled it up, double header. <laughs> yes, that's how easy it is to catch croaker, my friends. You can catch them two at a time. Now I'm getting picky because I got two on here, right? And one looks a little bit bigger than the other. So this one looked a little bigger. I take him off first because I'm like, hey, he might be a good size one. I got about nine inches. He's going in the bucket. The other one. Eh, he might have only been like eight inches, so now I'm getting picky, right? I'm only going to keep the big you know, nine-inch ones. I can't keep these little eight-inch ones. So he got to go back in the water and grow a little bit. Let me show you how easy it is to catch a croaker. I'm going to count here and show you how quick it, you can. Here's the cast, all right? It's in the water. I'm pulling back the reel. I'm tightening up the line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A nine and ten 
Can I have my fish, please? <laughs> there you go. Ten seconds, my friends, to catch a croaker. That's all it takes. So this is not, uh, <laughs> you know, great a great fish. If you've got kids or grandkids, you want to take them out and, and they, they get bored, right? If they're sitting on a boat for too long and they're not catching anything, take them out for croaker. Take them down to the pier, the T pier. Take them to 14th Street. There's plenty of croaker there. And you can just fish off the pier and just get them hooked on fishing. One last spot. I'm going to go up Montgomery Slough just a little bit more. There's a nice little spot here where there's some grass on, on, the, on the port side of my kayak and the marsh on the other side. And as the water runs between those two grass areas, it brings with a lot of, you know, crustaceans or bait basically right so the fish sit on the other side and they just with their mouths open waiting for the stuff to come in so i thought maybe the croak would do this secretly i think i was hoping i would catch like a black drum <laughs> you know just like get past this croaker thing and accidentally catch a black drum like instead of accidentally catching a croaker byproduct i would accidentally catch a black drum but it didn't happen <laughs> i just continued to get croaker after croaker okay we're back and we got a bucket of croaker want to know why they're called croaker Let's see. I don't think they're, they're croaked. Wait, one of them's going. No, can't get them to croak. So now that we have our bucket of croaker, we're gonna clean the fish. Uh, there's lots of ways you can clean fish, and really what I'm doing here is just your basic cutting off the heads, taking out the guts, separating the, the good from the bad. <laughs> and um, that's it for right now. And then I'll decide what I'm gonna do with the pieces later on. So this is just to get them cleaned up right from the start. So I'm gonna take the meat, if you will, which is not much on a croaker, but I'm gonna take that piece, throw it in a plastic bag. I'll take that up to the kitchen, rinse them off, put them in the fridge or until I figure out what I'm gonna do with them. And for now, I'm just gonna keep the little fish heads in a bucket with the guts until I decide what I'm gonna do with those. So, <laughs> what do you do with a bucket of fish heads? Well, I'm going to turn these croaker heads into crab. At least that's my hope. Let's see what we can do. I saved one. I saved one fish head. I got a I got an idea. I heard, well, I mean, I've heard that the Native Americans, Indians, would take fish heads and stick them underneath the corn and the corn would grow. Now, I'm trying to grow a tomato. I have one tomato plant. Um, I, three years I've tried to grow tomatoes and I've never been successful at it. So this year, I'm gonna try the Indian trick here and stick the fish head underneath the tomato. And then uh, we'll see, maybe, maybe it'll help it grow tomatoes. Can't hurt. Let's go. Do my gardening. I don't wanna mess up the roots. Already got some roots here. Just gonna get the fish head down there. Oh yeah, that's gonna work out. That right down there. Fish head. It's right down there under the roots. Pack that soil back up on top there. A little extra guts. All right. That's it. We'll come back uh, at a later date and uh, see if it works. Who knows? Pull the crab trap up. Got a couple. Got a couple. Yeah, I got a couple in there. So that's how you turn croaker into crap. Now we can boil these guys up, have a little feast. So for me with blue crabs, it's a boil. We're having a crab boil. So I will get a pot of water, rolling boil there. 
I like to put crab oil in there. I went down to the Southport Market and they have swamp side seafood oil. I bought a four and a half pound bag of swamp side seafood oil, <laughs> put that in there, bring it to a boil, and then I throw the crabs in there. And really you can just let them sit and boil for like uh, 15, 20 minutes till they turn all red. And then you can bring them out and they're ready to eat. You put a little butter on the side so you got some dipping sauce there. We've got a little tool set to help you crack the crabs open and take them apart and eat them. So you can grab one of those. I think sell them down there at the Southport Market also. They've got the real expensive fancy ones but uh, anyway they're delicious so definitely turn some croaker into crab so if you remember a while back i took one of the croaker heads and i put it underneath the tomato plant because i had heard that the native americans had done that on the corn and it made the corn grow so i was thinking if i do it on tomato hopefully the tomato will grow so we're gonna go out and check it right now check out the garden and and see if it worked let's go come on what oh my gosh look at that Wow, I'm just gonna pick those, pick those, right, right, farm fresh, right off the, right off the tomato plant. I can't believe there's so many grew. Look, look at them all, farm fresh, vine ripened. They are. Right? There's like two more on the floor. They're getting all dirty. Oh my gosh, I gotta pick them up. Look, I'm gonna have to wash them. But you know what? That's when you, when you grow your own food. You know, that's, that's the way it is. You know, you gotta, gotta get a little dirt on. But that's okay. Cause that's. That's what farming's all about. It's a subsistence so living. Oh, another one dropped. <laughs> They're just falling off the vine here. All right, I'm gonna go wash them in the sink and make a salad. I guess a tomato salad or something. Now, another thing I've heard is you can donate your croaker to Seabiscuit, which is a bird rescue here on the island. Uh, you might want to call them and find out if that's true. But what I like to do with croaker is make croaker soup. So right here, I've got a pot of boiling water, and you can see I actually did fillet those little croaker, which took a long time. And I just put those fillets right into the boiling water. I got some olive oil out. I put it in a pan, and I have this mix left over, this chutney mix left over from fish tacos the other night. It's got pepper, tomato, onions, and even a little mango and some jalapeno. I use these spices, I put them on top of that chutney right there, and I just threw that thing in a frying pan with that hot olive oil and let it cook up. Let it, it's going to soften those tomatoes, going to break it down a little bit. Now here's my secret ingredient. I got a handful of little necks and I threw them into my pot of boiling water too. So I got the fish in there, I got the clams in there, and I just pour that mixture right into the frying pan. So anything that was kind of burnt in the bottom kind of comes off, comes off nice and in there. And I just let that whole thing cook up for a little bit. I put that in a bowl. This is an outstanding, great little meal right here. This uh, croaker takes a long time to catch them and clean them, but it is worth it. Not very long to cook. Get out there, catch some croaker, have some fun. We'll see you out there, sir.